I don't want to be mad. I swear to God. Listen, guys, I have anger issues as it is, if you can't tell from my videos already. Um, you know, I have bipolar 2 disorder. Okay? So, I get angry a lot. But, Halloween and Christmas, those are the two points throughout the year where you have to actively try to get me angry, you have to actively try. And I feel like this movie, yesterday, it mocked me, stared me right in the face and said, hold my fucking beer. I need to know, DC, how do you go from the first Wonder Woman being literally the best DCEU film to having a sequel be competing with Justice League for the worst. I mean, God, you had to act, you had to actively try for that. I, wow, that that's a fucking accomplishment. I, I don't know how you fucking did it, but you did it. In, in case it's not obvious, um, I didn't even script this review out like I do all my other ones. Because I am so disappointed and pissed off that I just went, I don't care. I, I don't care. I'm just going to go on camera. I'll do my thoughts on this movie. And... Okay. Let me start out just the couple things that I did like in this movie. Because there's not a lot. So let's get that out of the way. First, um, Gal Gadot, great as Wonder Woman as always. Um, Chris Pine, good performance, fine. They were better in the first movie, but yeah, they're still fine here. No problems with them. Um, the White House fight scene was actually really cool. I liked that whole fight scene. That was, that was, that was impressive. I give them that one. And... The one character in this movie that I can actually say I loved from the beginning up until, you know, the end where they fucked her over, um, was Barbara, or Cheetah. She was the one character I'm like, okay, this is a fully developed character from start to finish. Okay, whether you like her or hate her, she's at least a fully developed character Okay, and I, personally, I liked her progression in the story. I liked the way Kristen Wiig played it. I like how she starts off, like, she, she reminded me of Selena Kyle from Batman Returns. She reminded me a lot of that. Um, not in the sense of, of how she's going crazy, but how she is at the start. Uh, reminded me of Michelle Pfeiffer's performance in that. And I really enjoyed that. Patty Jenkins pulled inspiration from Superman. The, the, the Superman movies in, in the first one. Uh, so... Pulling, you know, something from Batman Returns, I'm actually 100% cool with. Everything else I fucking hated. This script is trash. It is absolute fucking dog shit. It doesn't make any sense. It's all over the place. It's convoluted as fuck. I, I could not, I could barely follow anything in this goddamn movie. There is hardly any Wonder Woman action to speak of. And even when there, there is, again, the only entertaining scene with Wonder Woman at least for me, uh, was that White House scene. Like, late, and that's like two hours into the damn movie. That's almost two hours. All right, there's one fight scene with her where she's chasing down, uh, like, uh, Maxwell Lord and, like, all these trucks and shit. And my God, there is some horrible fucking blue screen in that scene. I mean, God, like, it's bad, like... There's literally, like, two moments where it's, like, it like, closes in on her running. And, like, you can tell she's literally jogging in place in front of the blue screen. It looks so bad. So that was terrible. Um, the mall scene in the beginning, yeah, I guess that was cute, but it really adds nothing. Um, the opening scene of this movie where Diana's a kid and she's doing the whole American Gladiators bullshit with the other Amazons. You could have cut that from the fucking movie. You, that scene. 
had no place in this film. Like, I don't know why the fuck that was in the movie. I, I mean, I guess because it showed a moment when she was a kid where she cheated, and I guess she's trying to cheat death or whatever with Steve Trevor, but even then, when I say that, I feel like I'm just reaching for a fucking explanation. I want to talk about Steve Trevor for a second. Because Steve Trevor, she basically wishes on a stone for him to come back. And he does, but in another dude's body. So they basically, instead of him just, you know, coming back to life and appearing somewhere, he's, he quantum leaps himself into another fucking dude's body. They never explain why, never explain how, it just kind of happens, so accept it. That's basically what this whole movie is. Just shut up and take it. Because logic does not exist in this fucking film. Um, so yeah, that was stupid. Maxwell Lord. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna make this very fucking clear. If it wasn't for Steppenwolf. If it was not for Steppenwolf, Maxwell Lord would be the worst fucking villain in the DCU. This guy is the biggest fucking moron on the planet. Okay, yeah, I'm going to use this to gain all power and, you know, while I'm doing this, you know, I don't care that every fucking country is about to nuke each other. I have power, yay! You're about to get taken out with nukes, you fucking dumbass! What the fuck? Jesus Christ, this guy's a fucking idiot! The writing is absolutely atrocious. The directing is fucking atrocious, which is killing me because it's still Patty Jenkins! I'm like, sweetheart, you did the first one! You did a wonderful fucking job! Like, everyone... Everyone had your fucking back on this one. Everyone wanted you to come back and do this. Shit, we were praying that you would just stay and do a trilogy for Wonder Woman. How did you fuck this up? Like, put it this way. If I wasn't told, like, if I didn't know going into this that Patty Jenkins directed it, I, I would never guess that she did. This honestly felt like we went from Batman Returns and the first Wonder Woman to Batman and Robin with this one. I am being real with you. That's how fucking bad it is. And again, as I said, I did really like Cheetah in the movie. And I loved her development. But here's the thing. Throughout the film, there were parts where they were just sidelining her. And I'm like, oh, come on. you got to do more with her. Show me the Cheetah. Like, have her transform. Do something. All right. We finally get to that fucking moment where she's Cheetah. And she's fighting Diana. I'm like, oh, fuck yeah. Let's do this shit. It's over in a minute. It it's literally over in, like, a minute. I'm like, are you fucking serious? Like, all that fucking build-up for, like, a minute fight, and it killed me, because I'm like, this is the one character in this movie I loved, and you get to the ending, and you just completely do her dirty. Okay, like, I have nothing to say bad about Cheetah or that performance, except, again, them just wasting her at the fucking end. And that pisses me off more than anything. The wasted fucking potential here. Like, Patty Jenkins, you had everyone eating out of your fucking hands. You had every DCU fucking fanboy eating out of your fucking hands. And this is what you gave us? What the shit? Like, I, I... Oh my god. Even the score by Hans Zimmer. I'm like, Hans Zimmer does amazing superhero scores. Even Dark Phoenix, where he didn't even have to... He didn't even have to go all out for that. He fucking did. The score for Dark Phoenix is fucking brilliant. Okay, you look at the score for this? It's the most generic shit you could possibly put in a movie like this. There's one scene where she's flying. She starts flying. They never explain how she can fly now, by the way. This apparently takes place in 1984. And she didn't fly in BBS. She didn't fly in Justice League. But, you know, uh, uh, you know, whatever. She, she's flying now. And in the background, they're literally playing music from the Days of Future Past trailer. I I'm not even joking. It's the same fucking music. And I don't know if Hans Zimmer actually did that score in another movie or not, but it really shows just how on autopilot he was in this film. Okay, but one of the biggest things about this film that really was irritating me 
What was the point of setting this in the 80s? There was no reason to set this movie in the fucking 80s. You could have set this in modern day. It would be the same fucking story. And I, I, there's people who like it who are already saying, oh, well, it's cool to hate. No, no, fuck you. It is not cool that I hated this movie. It is not cool that I hated this. I wanted to fucking love this movie. Again, that one scene in the White House, I loved it. Gal Gadot and Chris Pine, their performances are still great. Like, they're still fine. I have nothing against them. But again, I'd rather watch a good movie with these performances, like the first one. Kristen Wiig as Cheetah. Loved her. Loved Kristen Wiig as Cheetah. Okay, like, she deserved a better fucking movie. I am so pissed at how dirty the ending did her. Me and Rob were just sitting on the couch the whole time, and when we weren't completely miserable watching this movie, like, he was absolutely miserable because he was already sick. All right? But we were when we weren't miserable, we were just laughing at how fucking terrible it was. Even Pedro fucking Pascal. How do you have him turn in a bad performance? I don't know. Ask Patty Jenkins. Apparently, she's the only one that can. So, there you go. Wonder Woman 84. It fucking blows. It's getting a D. The only reason it's getting a D is for Kristen Wiig. If not for her, this movie would have been a straight fucking F. Wonder Woman 84. It fucking sucks. Goodbye. Ah!